In this video, we're going to look at animator blend trees. This is a super useful animator feature to help you blend between various states of animation. You define some parameters and some logic and it automatically chooses the right animation. Let's begin. All right, so here's what we want to make. I have my simple character just standing around. This is being animated using sprite-based animation, but you can use any animation type. And right now it's on idle. And as I move right, it plays the right animation. As I move left, that animation move up and move down. So as you can see, all the animations are correctly chosen. And as I stop moving, it goes back to idle and it also chooses the correct idle animation. So here is the final animator component with an idle blend tree and a movement blend tree. And each of these trees is composed of a bunch of animations. So as you can see, it takes a bunch of parameters and then decides which of these animations to play. So this is a really useful feature. And the character sprite that I'm using here is from the complete visual scripting course that I'm currently working on. One of the games is an action RPG using this character. So if you're interested in a visual scripting course, check the link in the description. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in my starting scene. All I have is just a simple player character completely static with no animations. Okay. So let's begin by selecting the player game object and we're going to add a component and it will be the animator component. Then as you can see, it requires an animator controller. So on the project files, right click, go into create and down here we have the animator controller. So the player animator controller and here just drag the object. Okay. Now if you double click on the animator controller, yep, out pops out the animator window. And now in here, if you right click, you can create a normal state. So create the normal one, then in here you can select the motion, which is the animation. So that's how you add a normal animation. However, you can also right click and over here create a new blend tree. So there it is, the blend tree. And now if you double click, you can go inside the blend tree. All right, so this is the inside of our blend tree. And now with the blend tree selected, here in the inspector, we can see a bunch of options. First one, we see the blend type. So essentially over here we have the number of dimensions and for now let's leave it at the simplest one possible, so just one dimension. Then we can select the parameter, so by default it already added one, but let's add a proper one from scratch, so click on the plus icon to add new parameter and then click make it a float parameter and we're going to name this the horizontal movement. So in here on the parameter click on the drop down menu and select the horizontal movement. And now we can get rid of the default one, so there it is. Okay. So we select the parameter and then here we have a list of motions. So these are all the separate animations. And over here on the project files, I already prepared some animations previously. So in this case, I'm using sprite based animation, but you can use any type of animation. And for now, let's click on the plus icon in order to add a new motion field. And let's select the walk right animation. So there it is. You can see that it added a new state. And let's add another one. Also make it a motion field. And for the motion, select the walk left. All right, so now here we see some parameters. So the first one is over here, the threshold, and you might see that the value is logged. If so, over here you have a checkbox for automate thresholds. So if you untick this one, you can now manually edit the threshold. So for the walk left, let's put it at minus one and the walk right at plus one. So down here we can see the horizontal movement and we can click and drag in order to modify it. And over there we can see which one is working. So down here you can head on play and there you go, he's walking left. And if I move it to plus one, now he's walking right. So yep, exactly as we want. So in this case, we're using sprite based animation. So it will only play either one or the other one. But if you were using some more complex animations with actual movement on the objects, then it would interpolate between them. So in this case on the threshold, it will choose which animation to play depending on if the value is above the certain threshold. So if the value is above minus one, then we're going to play the left animation. Down here we can hit on play in order to preview. So at minus one, it's playing that one. And if I push it up to one, yep, there you go, it's playing the wonk right animation. Okay, so that's the threshold. And next to it, we have the animation speed. So this is essentially the animation time scale. So using this, we can make an animation go faster or slower. So for example, let's make the wonk right go twice as fast. And yep, there you go, wonk right is going really fast and wonk left is going normal. And lastly, you have the mirror setting, which lets you mirror an animation. All right, so those are all the settings. And with this, we have our basic blend tree working. Now, all we need to do in order to make this work is to modify the horizontal mount parameter through our code. So we just need to do that and all our animations work perfectly. Okay, so let's go into the player script. Here it is, just a very, very basic character controller. I covered something similar in a separate video, so go watch that if you want to learn more. Essentially, here we just have some keyboard inputs. And then we're calculating a move direction vector. Then we have a test if we are idle or if we are moving. So it's a very small, very simple script. 
And now it's in here that we want to modify the parameter on the animator. So first let's go up here, define a field for the animator animator. And on await we grab the animator, get component of type animator. And then down here, okay, we get our inputs, we make our movement direction vector. And if we are moving, let's go into the animator. And we're going to set a float parameter, so set float. And then the name we used was horizontal movement. And then for the value, which is going to be our move direction vector dot x. All right, so just like this, everything should be working. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and we still didn't add the add animation state, so it starts off walking. And right now, it's on the default walking left. But if I press right, yep, there you go, it plays the walk right animation. And if I press left, yep, there you go, playing left. All right, so our basic logic is fully working. Now let's just add the idle animation state. So for that, we need to go back into the parent animator. So up here, you can see the layers that we are. So we are inside the blend tree. So if we click on this one, yep, we go up one level. All right, we have our blend tree and we can also rename this. So the movement blend tree. And then we want to add the idle state. So let's right click, create a new state. Let's make it also a blend tree and let's name it our idle blend tree. And we're going to start off with this one. So just right click in order to set this layer as a default state. Okay, so this is the default state. And in order to transition between idle and movement, let's add another parameter. So up here, create a new one, make it a Boolean and call this is moving. And then we take this, we right click, we make a transition onto the movement. And on this transition, we're going to add the condition. So if the condition is the parameter is moving, if it is true, then we transition into movement. And then from movement, make a transition back. And from this one, we also add the is moving. And in this case, if it's set to false. And here in the settings, let's make it automatic. So with no exit time, no transition duration. All right, so we have the logic for our starter state as well as transitioning between idle and movement. So now let's set up the idle blend tree. And in here, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing that we did with the other one. So we're going to use the same horizontal movement parameter. So let's add two motions. So there it is, the idle left and idle right. So down there we can see the preview. So with this one on minus one, yep, there you go, idle left and on the right and yep, idle right. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now back in the code. In here, we already have a Boolean for is idle. So the is moving is essentially going to be the opposite of this one. So it's simply testing if the move X and move Y, if both are at zero, then the character is idle. If not, then it is moving. So in here, just going to the animator in order to call set Boolean and we give it the name is moving. So is moving, and in this case we set it to true, and up here we set it to false. We could also obviously just put it in here and put it not is idle. So just like this it would work, but let's keep it the manual approach for now. Okay, so with this let's test. Okay, here we are starting off idle on the left side. Yep, there you go, and if I press the left button, yep, there you go, he's walking left, and let go, and yep, he's back into idle. Now move right, yep, moving right, let go, and yep, he's walking right. All right, so it seems like all of our logic is fully working. Awesome. So the logic is all working, but so far we've been using a one dimensional blend tree. So everything is working, but only going from left to right. If we go up, yep, everything does not work. So let's fix that. Over here on the movement blend tree, again, we have our blend type and we have one direction and then we have some other blend types. So the next one is 2D simple directional. So this one is for when you have just one animation per each direction. Then you have 2D freeform, which is when you want multiple animations for each direction. And 2D freeform Cartesian, which is used when the animations are not based on direction. So for our case, we want the simplest possible. So let's pick just the 2D simple directional. And now right away, we see that our graph went from a flat graph to a 2D graph. So we now have an X and Y axis. And up here, we actually need two parameters. So let's create another one for the vertical movement. So in here, create a new float, call it the vertical movement and use this on the Y axis. And over here, we need to add all the other motions. All right, there they are. And now instead of having just a single threshold, we have the position X and the position Y. All right, so they're all set up, all of them with their thresholds correctly set. And in here, you can click and drag the red position. So this will modify both of our parameters. So as I move to the right, yep, there you go. It's modifying the horizontal mount. So that one is at one and the vertical is pretty much at zero. And we can see down here on our preview. Yep, there we go. We've got the wonk right animation. And if we go up there, yep, we've got wonk up, then wonk down and wonk left. 
All right, so you can see that everything is perfectly working. So based on the values that we give our parameters, we're correctly choosing the right animation. So our movement blend tree is fully working, and now we just need to add the exact same thing over here on the island blend tree. All right, so there it is, set up exactly the same. So over there, we've got island right, island up, island down, and island left. All right, so we have both of our trees working, both of them dependent on the horizontal and vertical movement parameters. And on the main animator, we've got our basic transitions based on the is moving volume. So all that's left is to set our vertical movement through our code. So over here, it's very simple. We're just going to do pretty much the exact same thing. So we're going to set another float for the vertical movement. And this case is the move the dot y. All right, so that's it. That's all we need to do and everything should be working. So let's test. Okay, start off idle left, move to the right. Yep, walking and idle, move left, walking, idle, move up, walking and idle, move down and walking and idle. All right, so over here we have our animations all fully working. So we can move in any direction and based on the parameters that we set, the animator correctly chooses which animation it should correctly play. So here we have our character with movement working in all directions. And naturally, you could expand upon this to add even more animations to the blend tree and add some specific animations for up left, up right, and so on, and fit all the diagonals. All right, so here it is, everything working. Awesome. So here you can see the blend trees in action and how they help you manage multiple animations based on just a handful of parameters. Now, like I said, this character and this blend tree is from the complete visual scripting course that I'm currently working on. One of the games is an action RPG where I will be using this character. So if you're interested in the visual scripting course, check the link in the description. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions, have in comments, and I'll see you next time.